Well, good Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Hope everybody is having a great, great day. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, as we know, are a creature of habit, okay? As much as we feel like everything has changed, um, Stephen Jones is still looking for bargains. They just have gotten better at getting their bargains, or we'll see how these things work out. Because you never honestly know, bringing in new guys, a lot of times it's the guys that you're kind of like, meh, when you sign them, but become great players for you. And sometimes the guys that you hired that you think are going to do great things, peter out. So we'll have to wait till the season actually get here and see how these new pieces end up meshing with uh, the existing ones and the change of coaching philosophy on the offense. One thing, though, is for sure is the Cowboys like to draft guys they've gotten to know. Generally speaking, you will see players that have come in for that, you know, visit, that 20 visit players. Excuse me. Sorry, I've been, I've been up most of the night. I went to bed at about uh, 2.30 this morning, 2.30, 3 o'clock uh, with the machine, and I've been up since 6, uh, trying to get everything ready for tomorrow's CSA show. Uh, me, Michael, uh, Dam Gina will be there tomorrow because it is in Chantilly, Virginia, autograph signing show. Michael Irvin is supposed to be there. Hope to see the playmaker. Uh, this will be one of the few appearances in public that we've seen since the Marriott situation. So definitely looking forward to that. We'll see Tony Dorsett. We'll end up seeing uh, Trayvon Diggs will be there. Um, of course, uh, Tony Dorsett, as well as many, many others. And I hope to see you guys there. So I got a lot of work to do today to be ready for that. But be that as it may, be that as it may, the Cowboys are, they, they like to get to know these guys. They like to pick their brains. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they've done so well with first-round picks is they've done their homework as opposed to just relying to, you know, everybody else's uh, synapsis of a player. So another one of these players, and this is where the Cowboys have been bringing in a plethora of different positions. We've seen defensive tackles. We've seen cornerbacks. We've seen running backs. And now we see Quentin Johnson come in today or is going to be coming in for a visit as well. Quentin Johnson, a six foot three, I think he's six foot three, about 210 pound wide receiver, a big target. His draft grade is a 6.4. Um, not one of the top, top wide receivers, but definitely probably a guy that will end up being, you know, in the second round, maybe third round type of a guy. Uh, his combine score was an 83, which ranked six. I'm uh, more like a second round guy. Um, his production score was 11th ranked through there. Could definitely jump uh, 40 inch vertical. So you like to have a guy that can elevate. So we'll see, yeah, will he get the reports after he comes in for a visit? Now, here's one of these crazy things now. Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings, love Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings, I met back in 2012. He was a United Way spokesman. I met him with Calais Campbell the same year and stuff when they were here doing some work with United Way. Nice guy. I've seen him over the years and things. His wife was wonderful and all that. But I'm afraid Greg Jennings is on some crack. I I'm just afraid of it. He's a hell of a drug. <laughs> I, I, there's no other way to explain it. I have to play this clip because, you know, maybe it's the whole, if you want to get publicity, if you want to get your name out there, trash the Cowboys, specifically Dak Prescott. Yes, and I'm going to say something that I have said. Yes. And I don't want to hear anything until the end of this. Daniel Jones is a top 10 quarterback. Oh, what? Stop. Daniel Jones is a top 10 quarterback. Wow. I said it, In what and I say it with my <laughs> chest. Yeah. Like, John, what you just heard from John Mara, he obviously knows, he sees what he sees, but the progression is there. When Cocaine we see guys drug. progressing, we <laughs> automatically want them to do it the way that Joe Burrow has done it, the way that Justin Herbert has done it. 
that wasn't Daniel Jones. And that's okay because he's gotten paid. He's going to keep his head down. He's going to continue to work. You bring in a guy like Darren Waller, obviously you're going to improve if he can stay healthy. He's a great asset to that offense. Daniel Jones' production will continue to improve. He will be one of the better quarterbacks. I'm you not just said say, top, top ten. No, hold, 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 let, let's let say me, consistent let me, let me, again. No, don't <laughs> say one of the let, better top ten. Let me finish. Please. He will be the second best quarterback in his division. Behind Jalen Hurts? Behind Jalen Hurts. So he's better than Dak Prescott. He's better than Dak Prescott. Okay. I'm just, okay, I, I'm trying to understand the matrix of how Daniel Jones is better than Dak Prescott. This year was the first year that he had over 20 touchdown passes. 24. His most, I'm sorry, excuse me, excuse me, 15 this year. His most passing touchdowns were 2019. Uh, 24, 11, 10, 15. This year he had the most passing yards that he's ever had in a season at 3,205. So I'm trying to understand what it is matrix-wise that evaluates you to say he's better than Dak. Clearly, Dak has got statistics that are way better than anything that Daniel Jones has done. Just has. Cowboys have had number one offense two out of the last three years. And if you say when Dak Prescott played this year, they also had the highest scoring offense. Um, a lot of people will say, well, it's wins and losses. Okay. Got you. Daniel Jones has never beat the Cowboys and Dak Prescott. So head to head, he's never beaten the Cowboys and Dak Prescott. So how, how... Do you say Daniel Jones is better than Dak? Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Greg, you, you need to get some help, bro. Sorry, Greg. You got to get some help. I will say that I believe that this offseason thus far has definitely been one of the best. We went from the worst last year, although we still ended up being a playoff team, to having a really good one so far, and it's not over yet, because here's the thing that's, you know, we, we're sitting here worrying about Terrence Steele, what the plan is about Terrence Steele, and we're still in March. Be it the last day of March, but we're still in March, and we're worried about Terrence Steele. You know, Jerry Jones saying that, you know, he, he's going to be a backup, but he's too valuable to tackle, and we don't have a guard. We got a long way to go before this meal is cooked. We still have a lot of pieces that are going to come in. We've got the draft coming up this month. And then, of course, there's that next wave of free agency. See, here's where, where, where things will really get interesting. Because the next wave of free agency, as teams draft players and they say, we can let go of this veteran, as teams like uh, the Cardinals that are holding on uh, and trying to make a trade for DeAndre Hopkins because they don't want to, you know, eat that qu contract, and they realize he's not going to be the guy for them going forward. They're going to get desperate to make moves. You hear Denver is still trying to move Jerry Judy. They're going to get desperate to try and make moves. Those guys are going to be available later. Along with when teams draft players, it's like, oh, my God, I didn't think we were going to get that receiver or that offensive lineman. We can let go of this veteran. There will be, and this is where Stephen Jones, <laughs> we love a bargain, will be making moves because we also get that $10.9 million of Zeke's money. So we got 13 then we get another 11 You got $24 million without making anything, you know, with, like, say, Jordan Lewis where you may have to do an injury settlement or something. You haven't done Dak Prescott's extension yet, where you can get some more money. 
And so they don't have to be in a hurry. You can survey the field now because the Cowboys have done a good job of plugging all of their holes. Are there areas where we could use improvement? Yes. Are there areas where we could look for an upgrade? Yes. Are there areas where we look, wish that we had a guy to back up? Yes. And that's where this stuff will come to play. I'm glad that we have that stuff in order because in a few weeks, OTAs are going to begin. And the OTA period is huge because there's not the training camp like it used to be where there's two a days where you actually got a chance to work together. The real work actually happens in these few OTAs and mini camps to get on the same page. And when you have a situation like, say, Lamar Jackson, who, you know, I don't want to be here, who may be going to another team or, you know, an Aaron Rodgers who doesn't like OTAs going to maybe the Jets and not wanting to do it, the longer those things take to get those pieces in there, the harder it is to get them in the fold. Let's listen in to the Lamar Jackson demands a trade talk. Of the day in Baltimore, where Lamar Jackson and the Ravens remain at an impasse. This comes after Lamar shared his trade request Monday on Twitter. Did you hear what Richard Sherman said on his podcast yesterday about Lamar Jackson's situation? Listen to this. What pissed me off is when Kirk Cousins got his fully guaranteed deal, I thought all the quarterbacks from then on were going to mm -hmm. be like, hey, if it ain't guaranteed, I ain't taking it. Then Mahomes took that BS deal mm -hmm. in just 10 years and wanted to look like half a million. Like, But if you get a half of that fully guaranteed, everybody's happier. That says president. For them to say nobody's interested in these. I mean, they trading two first round picks for D linemen, for safeties. And you talking about former MVP of the league. A lot of these teams don't got nobody at the quarterback uh, spot. Some yeah. of them trading two first round picks to draft a kid that you don't know what he going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is a lot to unpack. A lot. What Richard Sherman just said. It really is in some ways almost two separate conversations. One of them is about the quarterbacks who've come before who did not push the issue, push the envelope, if you will. And then the other is about all these teams who seem to be ignoring the greatness of Lamar Jackson. Dan Orlovsky, I'll start with you. What, what piece of that felt like the most important to you as we consider what is and isn't happening with Lamar? I don't think Kirk Cousins factors into this conversation. His deal was for $84 million. <laughs> I, I think Lamar is looking for and, and worthy of much more. So um, for the Patrick Mahomes part of this conversation, I, I just, listen, Lamar's situation is so uniquely different because where he sits in the rookie aspect of his deal, the performance that he has played, the reality, everyone floats these conversations like there's not reality. The reality that a quarterback before him got a fully guaranteed $230 million deal. That didn't happen before Kirk Cousins. And, and, and the conversation around Patrick Mahomes and he should have done this or should have done that, we understand we've seen players come out and talk about how great of a player Lamar Jackson is. No one is debating that. But everyone talks about this like it's a one-sided conversation, and it's not. I'll say this again. If you're Baltimore and you even entertain trading Lamar Jackson, how do you not get worse? You got how do you right. not get worse? Wh who can give you a player or a pick to replace Lamar Jackson where you sit there, and Mike T knows this better than I do, you have one goal as a football team in an organization in the offseason, get better. How do, they get how do they not get worse? Now, there's no way for them not to get worse in the short run. I, I, I guess maybe if you were to defend their side of this argument, and generally I'm on Lamar's side of the argument, but if you were to defend what they're doing, you would say they believe that in the long run they will be better for not having given the contract and tied themselves to him for whatever period of time it is. Again, I don't even think it's just a football decision. I've said many times this is a business and a precedent mm -hmm. decision. We're trying to run a business here. About not wanting to give anyone a guaranteed contract. It doesn't make any difference who it is. And Patrick Mahomes is a good example of that because he might be the best player we've ever seen, and he didn't get one. Right, and Patrick Mahomes did what was best for him. But I think there's a bigger conversation here, Greeny, around team building, which is when you look at the macroeconomics of our league, the quarterbacks are just getting a much bigger piece of the pie. And when that happens, it just makes team building that much more challenging. So if you're the Colts with the fourth pick overall, you could pay $36 million overall for four years. And if you're paying Lamar $50 million, that's a massive savings. And you can just look at this graphic 
and see on a percentage of a cap basis how much more these guys are getting. Now, look, mm. of course you'd want a lot of these guys starting with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, but when you look at San Francisco and Philadelphia specifically, I want to stop training, this here for one second. As everybody who's talked about Dak Prescott's contract, mind you, okay? Mind you, everybody's talked about how bad Dak Prescott, you know, how he's destroyed the Cowboys. Percentage of the cap, percentage of the cap, Russell Wilson was 22.1 last year. Kyler Murray, 22.1. Pat Mahomes, 22.7. Josh Allen, 23.6. Russell Wilson, again, another hot one, 18.6. Matt Ryan, 16.9. Matthew Stafford, 16.2. What you'll notice there is Dak Prescott has never been one of those guys as far as their cap number. And it's amazing to me that we were talking last year about Dak Prescott, how it hampers the team with that contract that he's had. Daniel Jones signs one for the same amount. Kyler Murray signs one for a lot more. Deshaun Watson signs one fully guaranteed. Josh Allen signs one that's even bigger than Dax. But I don't hear anybody talking about any of those contracts. None of them. But we'll get back to where we were. Put great rosters around rookie quarterback contracts. And that is a factor when we think about should the Colts go after Lamar Jackson or not. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we're having like four different conversations here all at once because all these things come into the conversation. The reality is to spend 23% of your salary cap. Well, why, Dan, why are you making that face? Because Patrick Mahomes is 40 and 9 since he yeah. signed his $500 million deal. He's gone to two Super Bowls. He's won one of them. He's the face of the NFL, and he's making more money off the field than he could ever fathom. So to sit there and say that Patrick, and I got a lot of respect for Sherm, and I don't know if exactly, exactly what he meant was that, but to sit there and say that he missed the opportunity to you know, set the bar, or set the president, he signed for $450 million. Yeah. He's the seventh most expensive quarterback in football next year. Looking back, it was 100% the right decision for him and his organization. Nico, jump in here. Well, here's the thing. You have a number, you have a number, I have a number. Every person has a certain number that if you are content or happy with that number, and as a football player in contract negotiations, yes, the contracts are not fully guaranteed. But if Patrick Mahomes was offered a contract that he felt was great, not only for his family, Mm -hmm. but for his legacy, because you also have to look at that whole team building aspect Mm -hmm. and winning Super Bowls and being on a winning team. Some guys, they go for the money, but they might not be in a winning situation. So at the end of the day, yeah, they, have some, they got a lot of money in their pocket, but they don't have nothing to show for it except for the cash. They don't have any Super Bowl wins, no playoff wins. So at the end of the day, you can't look at someone's contract and say, that's a BS contract. Can't say that because he was able to set his family up. You have enough money to where you're content. So everyone else, like if I sign the contract because I think that the money's right, that is mm-hmm. right. That's right. The whole Amen. guaranteed thing, it's up to the individual person. I have to leave it here for the moment. There's so much to be said about this, and we will do it. Let me take a quick break here because I'm up against the clock. The whole JETS. All right, so we'll leave it right there. Lamar Jackson still in limbo. We just don't know what's going to happen to him. That is, it's a travesty. It has been a travesty looking at uh, the whole Lamar Jackson situation. But, hey, I'm glad we got Dak. I'm glad that we're not having to trade up and try and find a guy. I am happy where the Cowboys are right now and hopeful that they're going to do some more things. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. We are working on getting better constantly. Um, I'm actually doing some stuff up in the workshop uh, for the Red Brick House as well as for tomorrow's CSA show. Definitely check by tomorrow and check out uh, some of the players that we'll be meeting and stuff and some of you guys that I hope to see there as well. I've had friends that I've I've been seeing year after year every year since 2012, and I look forward to seeing some of you great people again. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, let's get out of here. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is, how about this, Joe?